what a year for the Tulane Green Wave in 2022. I don't think anybody had this in mind when they talked about Tulane heading into that season. After a struggled full season in 2021, Willie Fritz pulled a turnaround of maybe all time. And now they have to repeat it. Now they have to defend their crown. And the 10 guys that we're going to talk about today have a lot of weight on their shoulders but they are ready for that challenge. We're going to start with the offensive line, a group that really was a big factor in the offense's success. You look at statistically, this was one of the best offenses in college football, and the offensive line played a big role in that. Princeton Pines is one of those players, and he's an experienced player who really turned up, turned it up a notch. You saw him take his game to a new level. You saw a lot of guys. Honestly, there's a we'll talk about multiple players on the offensive line today, and that's rare for some of these top 10s, but that's how good this team was because you don't get to where Tulane went if your offensive line was average, and this was a really good offensive line, and Pines was just one of those guys that will compete once again and hopefully keep this team a top the and you see that like, the biggest thing is that this is a new conference nobody really knows what we're going to get but i think that this offensive line returning the talent that it does puts them in good hands another group that needs to take a step and to, forward to help keep this team at the top is the defense keith cooper comes back after in an okay season production wise i think he gets more of a, an opportunity to showcase his skill his skill set in 2023, you look at this front seven and what they were able to do. The defensive line has a ton of talent, a ton of potential. Linebackers lose quite a bit, so maybe you need this defensive line to step up. But guys like Keith Cooper have been trying to break through to this group, and I think that speaks to the depth of this team. There's so many talented players that getting into the starting lineup isn't exactly easy. Cooper comes in at 6'5", 275 pounds. So he brings good size to the defensive line. And I think that you're going to see a career year for him because he gets more opportunities now. That's going to be huge for this defense, a defense that, again, has a ton of talent. Even with the talent that they lost, there's still plenty of players coming back that will make this team really good. One of the better additions in the transfer portal in the AAC was Tulane going out to get Shedro Lewis, the former Liberty running back can be utilized as a runner, but also can be utilized in the passing game as well. You look at some of the games he has, specifically his game against Syracuse, which I believe was two years ago. He is a home run hitter when you can get him the ball in space or if he can find running lanes. And when you lose a talent like Ty J Spears, you need to find someone who can create big plays. And now there are a couple running backs that are returning to Tulane's offense that's had experience last year, but Shedro Lewis will be a guy that competes for that starting spot. And I'm, I think that this rushing attack is in good hands. Another group that it needs someone to step up is the wide receiver position. You lost quite a bit of talent, but the, the, the exception to that is that, Michael Pratt didn't really focus in on one guy or another. Yeah, Deuce Watts had some really nice plays. Uh, you look at Shea Wyatt had some nice plays, but he didn't favor anybody really. There wasn't anybody that had significantly more catches, which wasn't exactly the case for a lot of teams in college football last year. But Michael Pratt did a great job of developing his entire group of pass catchers. Japan Jackson comes back. And will be the feature guy, if you will. He only had 33 catches last year, but he turned that into 554 yards, which is 16.8 yards per catch and three touchdowns. He's been on this team for a while. He's been a contributor both in the passing game, but also in the return game. So that's something to keep an eye on. And the fact that Pratt didn't focus in on one player over the last couple of years is huge because when you lose the amount of talent that you do, a lot of times that means you take a step back. But because Pratt is so good at distributing the football, I don't have any real big concerns about where this group is going. Sticking with the passing game, but on the defensive side of the ball, Jarius Monroe is back and takes on a bigger responsibility. You lost a, a little bit of talent in the secondary, and now you need to find ways to replace that talent. And Monroe is one of those guys. And when you've watched this film, this is someone who competes with the best of the best. He is a fierce competitor and someone who can compete with those good guys. And they're going to face quite a bit of, of talent 
at the wide receiver position. And Monroe is going to get tested quite a bit. And that's something that, honestly, you look at what this group did last year, it's only the pass was one of their strengths. So that's something to keep an eye on. A group that, again, is still really talented. It's just a matter of finding new starters and figuring those things out. I, I Sticking with that talent and the experience, Richard Green at offensive tackle was one of the bigger surprises in the AAC. Again, this offensive line played a huge role. Now, one thing I think if you're going to pick on this group is they gave up 29 sacks, which isn't terrible, 76th in the country. But if that's something you're going to improve, then I think you help this offense even even more. Given Michael Pratt plenty of time to throw, maybe he does find a go-to receiver. Maybe he just distributed the ball because he it was out of necessity. He just needed to get the ball out. But I think you're looking at a team that's really talented and has playmakers that can do a lot of damage. It's just a matter of giving your quarterback time, and with the talent they have returning up front, there's no reason why the balance in this offense shouldn't continue, and that'll be really helpful. Now, what the defense can do to help them is a big question too, but I think we talked about that defensive line, and honestly, this this group of defensive ends Keith Cooper already talked about, Darius Hodges comes in as well. Eight tackles for loss, five sacks. This could be a really dangerous defensive line in 2023. Again, you lost you lost a lot of talent in Nick Anderson and Dorian Williams. You lose two elite playmakers from this defense. That requires the defensive line to step up and make even more plays. And I just was one of those guys that could take a step forward. I love the explosiveness in which he plays. I love that he can get on the edge and disrupt things for the opposing offense, and that'll be huge for a Tulane team that obviously loses a lot of talent, but also returns a lot of talent and has a target on their back. And again, we'll go back to the offensive line for the next one. Sincere Hainsworth has been playing at Tulane for a long, long time. He has 49 games of experience and 44 starts under his belt already. And he could add another 12, 13 and or 14 games. This is a veteran player who getting him back, that center is huge for this team. It's huge for this offense, and it makes them a, a viable contender to defend their crown in the AAC to keep them at the top of the conference. And he is someone that can set the tone. He can get guys up to speed, and he can get this offense to where it needs to be. The other guy that he's going to snap the ball to will also play a key role in that. And we'll talk about him in a little bit. But first, we go back to the defensive line. Patrick Jenkins is one of the best defensive tackles in college football, period. Not just in the group of five, not just in the AAC, in college football. Coming in at six foot two, 305 pounds, you think maybe he's just power and he handles his own in the trenches. This man can also slide out and has underrated quickness that can get him to the quarterback. Nine tackles for loss, three sacks. They're not going to line him up outside too much. But he is someone who can utilize his quickness, something that I didn't realize he had until I watched a little bit of film on him this offseason. He is someone who is a big-time playmaker, who has made his presence known in big games, and is going to continue doing that this year. Another guy who took a step forward and it really let him everybody know who he was is Michael Pratt. Michael Pratt always had that potential coming into this this past year. I don't think anybody expected him to have a huge year, but they, we all knew he was capable of doing it. It was just a matter of taking that step forward. And, man, what, what did he do but have his best year of his career? 3,009 yards, 27 touchdowns to just five interceptions. He is the biggest reason for Tulane's success. He is the biggest reason why they had the year that they did, and he's also the biggest reason – why they were able to come back against USC last year in their bowl game. That was one of the better and more exciting bowl games that I watched in recent history, a comeback that I did not see coming. And I don't think a lot of people did. And now he is back for one final year. Tulane was able to, to keep him on campus. I think a lot of people wanted him to enter the transfer portal. He would have had a lot of opportunities had he gone somewhere else, but he decides to come back to Tulane and have a potential a repeat of last year, maybe even improve depending on what he gets in the skill positions. 
but this is someone who's going to lead his team very, very far. Willie Fritz has done a great job of getting this team where it needs to be, bringing back talent, developing talent, and adding talent from the transfer portal. And now we get a chance to see what do they look like as a top dog instead of an underdog. 